End game content. What is it and why is it important in a game? When making a game that will be played over and over again, it's important to give the player stuff to unlock here and there. So it always feels like you're making some kind of progress, even though you're dying all the time. But it's pretty bad game design to allow the player to unlock everything you have created without having to beat the game once. Therefore, it's important to add specific endgame content, which is stuff you can unlock only when you have beaten the game. So, what kind of endgame content have we added to Billy's Nightmare? Well, one feature that some of you have requested is hard mode. But what exactly is hard mode, and how would it work in Billy's Nightmare? Obviously, hard mode is a mode that makes the game harder. But there are many ways you can make a game harder, and not all of them might be good. One way you can make a game harder is by giving the enemies more health, making them tougher. But we didn't want to make our enemies bullet sponges. We feel like that might work better in a first person shooter, where enemies can have more health, while still dying instantly from headshots. This would make the game harder, while also rewarding a skillful player for having good aim. But since this won't work in our 2D game, we had to come up with something else. So, we decided that hard mode would reduce Billy's sleep or health by 50%, which obviously makes it twice as hard to stay alive. This way, the player has to be very good at avoiding taking damage to be able to beat the game. Something that is pretty challenging in a bullet hell roguelike game. But we didn't want our hard mode to just make the game harder. We wanted this mode to be both high risk and high reward. Meaning that, while it's twice as hard to stay alive, we're also doubling the amount of teeth, stars and dream catchers you can get. So, if you're really good at avoiding taking damage, you will benefit from playing hard mode. But how would the player activate this new mode? Since hard mode is part of our new endgame content, this will only become relevant once you have beaten the game. At that point, you will find a mysterious gift in Billy's bedroom. Opening it will spawn a creepy boogeyman doll, which lands on Billy's dresser. You can then interact with the boogeyman doll to place it or remove it from Billy's bed. Our idea is that this creepy doll will affect Billy, making it harder for him to stay asleep, hence activating the game's hard mode. Does this sound interesting or not? Leave a comment and let me know what you think. But enough of hard mode, what other kind of endgame content have we added? Since the boogeyman doll is something you get for free when beating the game, we wanted to add other stuff that you have to unlock in one way or another before you can use them. The question was, what stuff would the player be able to unlock, and where? Our first idea was to add new endgame content to the Tooth Fairy shop, but we quickly realized that this room was already feeling too cramped. So, what if we added some kind of upgrade to the shop, making the room bigger? The problem was that, once a level is generated, we can't change the size of a room. And it would feel pretty weird to pay for an expensive upgrade, and then the shop could stay the same size, until you visit it again on the next level. So, using an upgrade to make the shop bigger wouldn't work. But then I remembered an old bug we used to have in the game, where the Easter Bunny's room would always spawn next to the shop, like a neighbor. What if we tried to make this old bug into a feature instead, and added a new room that would always spawn next to the shop? And then, we could simply just put all the new endgame content in that room. And by always having this mysterious room there, which you can't enter until the game is beaten, the player would get very curious and wonder what's inside. But we needed some kind of in-game explanation to why the door to this room is locked. Instead of having a boring sign with information in front of the door, we decided to add a guard or a bouncer who won't let Billy inside. Stop right there! Only a true hero would get access to this room. We also decided to name this new room the VIP room, which is also written on the locked door and the corridor wall. 
The bouncer would then give you a member's card when the game is beaten, which allows Billy to enter the VIP room. To make sure that the player doesn't miss this, we moved the bouncer to the door inside the shop instead, when it's time for him to give you the VIP card. The problem was that it was very difficult to see him standing there in the shadows. So we placed him in front of the fireplace instead, so you can't miss him. This way, we hope that the player will understand that it's now possible to enter the mysterious VIP room. We now had a new room for our endgame content, so now it was time to add the endgame content itself. When playing the game and dying over and over again, it can be pretty frustrating to lose all your progress every time. So, what if you could unlock a way to give yourself a small boost on your next playthrough? Perhaps some kind of device that would allow you to save your teeth between dreams. So, the first thing we have added to the VIP room is this weird looking ATM machine, which is the dream bank. Using the left lever will deposit all of your teeth to the dream bank. Teeth stored in the bank will then stay there, even if you die or decide to restart the game. And using the right lever will withdraw all teeth saved in the bank, allowing you to spend them again. Saving your teeth in the dream bank can be very useful if you have to stop playing, or if you're about to fight a boss that might end up killing you. This way, you can buy what you need from the shop, and then deposit your remaining teeth in the dream bank. So if the boss fight doesn't end in your favor, you can withdraw your saved teeth and get a small boost the next time you play. So, that was the dream bank. But what else have we added to the VIP room? Well, sometimes when you visit the Tooth Fairy shop to buy some new abilities or items, it can feel like her selection is a bit small. With only two abilities and two items to choose from, it's a frustrating feeling to have teeth to spend, but nothing of value to buy. So, we decided to add two tables to the VIP room. One for items and one for abilities. This gives you a larger selection, and increases the chance that you find something that you want to buy. Lastly, we wanted to add something to unlock for all the guardians in the game. You know, the pets which fight for you, if you can find a pet shop. At the moment, you could only get one of these guardians per playthrough. That is, if you would even get the pet shop as one of the random NPC rooms. And if your guardian would die, that was it. You couldn't get another one. We felt that it could be interesting to unlock the possibility to make guardians more relevant in the game. So we added a third table to the VIP room, where it's possible to buy as many guardians as you want. So, as long as you can afford it, you could buy a small army. Here you can also buy pet food, which gives all your guardians full health. This item was also something that many of you had suggested. And we agree, having a way to heal your guardians feels like a pretty good idea. So, the new VIP room and the endgame content was now finished. Or was it? Well, like I said earlier, we wanted the player to unlock these things before he could use them. It felt a bit weird that you would get treated like a hero, get a member's card, and free access to this new VIP room. But then, you would have to pay a fee for all the stations, before you could even buy things in this room. So, we got the idea to make the VIP room look very old and abandoned. Like no hero have used this room in a long time. The player would then have to spend his magic night stars to repair all the broken stations in the room, before they could be used. Repairing them felt like a better solution than paying to unlock fully functional stuff. With all these problems solved, we finally now have some endgame content for Billy's Nightmare. A boogeyman doll that activates hard mode. A dream bank that allows you to save your teeth between dreams. And some tables where you can buy more abilities, items and guardians. This feels like some pretty good endgame content to unlock. But we're of course open to suggestions for more stuff to add. So we'd love to get some ideas from you guys. So. What kind of endgame content should we add to the game? Let me know down in the comments, and I'll see you in the next video.